Today we're diving into a topic that catches so many Australian retirees off guard. It's those unexpected surprises, those things that nobody talks about, nobody tells you about before you're retired and it's too late. So let's dive into some of the most common challenges, the common surprises that we find with our Australian retiree clients and the wider community and how you can avoid them or at the very least plan ahead for them. Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner working with Australians all over the world, planning for their retirement down in Australia. Today we're talking about, we're discussing some of the common surprises, those unexpected things nobody talks about when it comes to your retirement down in Australia. Let's dive in. The first one is lifestyle inflation. Now we've all heard of bracket creep and lifestyle creep, but far too many ignore the fact that this actually takes place when you're retired as well. We take up hobbies, we learn new skills, we make new friends, we join new communities, and these things all cost money. There's membership fees at the golf club, there's a membership fee at the Rotary Club, there's travel. We need to start planning ahead for these things and not just rely on the fact that our spending will actually drop year on year by a certain amount because you may find that it actually goes the other way and starts to increase over time as you take up these hobbies. So don't ignore that lifestyle creep or lifestyle inflation. Number two is the aged pension means testing. Now, many people have heard about the age pension, might have heard about the income test, the assets test, but not really appreciated how these tests apply or what they'll actually mean for them or what they'll mean for them when they actually go through their retirement. So there's not only the income test to consider, there's also the assets test. And it's often whichever one gives us the worst result that's going to apply for us. So not only important to consider this when you're planning for your retirement, but even in your retirement years, rerunning your assessment, are you eligible for a part pension? Are there changes you should make to your income, to your asset base, to your overall plans? Don't ignore this pension entitlement and the means testing. Another surprise for so many in retirement is part-time work. Now, as we all know, the ability or flexibility of different workplaces, working remotely, working online, taking up consulting, board positions, mentorships, whatever it might be, a lot of these things will often form part of our life in retirement. Now, it may not be for financial reasons, it may be really just regenerating or reinstilling that sense of accountability, that responsibility, that really that drive or that need to get out of bed in the morning and go and make that active contribution. Now, why is this important? Well, it's important to think about how this impacts our income, how this impacts our overall living, how we generate enough money to cover our expenses, and of course, what it may mean for our government age pension in terms of that entitlement. The next big surprise that catches so many off guard is that downsizing doesn't always save money. Far too many go into their retirement thinking we're going to downsize the big house, we'll sell it for three million, we'll go and buy something much smaller for two, and we'll have this million dollars left over. Now, sadly, many, many people have the exact same idea. And that two million very quickly becomes three. It's nicer, but it's smaller. It's in a more convenient location. The walk score is better. We can walk down to the beach, down to the river, down to the cafe, whatever it might be. So don't simply assume that downsizing is going to mean there's a large amount of money left over. Of course, run your numbers, look at real examples and plan ahead with that one. The next unexpected surprise is the impact of inflation. Far too many people keep their retirement nest egg in the bank or under the bed, really not working for us at all and ignoring the overall impact of inflation. Now, it's not really been something we've had to be concerned about from two years ago for the prior 10, but now with inflation rates of three, four, five percent, this is something we need to be very mindful of. If our investments in our retirement nest egg is not generating at least that inflation rate, we are going backwards. 
the price of groceries, the price of healthcare, utilities, electricity, all these things are going to continue to get more and more expensive. So we need to be tracking our spending and tracking the return of our overall investments. The next surprise, which some give a little bit of thought to, or at least panic and worry about, but very few actually calculate what this means for them. And that is longevity risk. What if I outlive my money? In an ideal world for many, many Australian expats seeking to retire in Australia, they would know the exact date that they're no longer going to need that nest egg, i.e. the date they will pass, and they'll spend every cent right up until that date. Now, sadly, that is not the way life works, so we need to be giving some thought to what that longevity risk looks like. Based on our current spending, the amount of money we have invested for our retirement, how long will that money last? What adjustments do we need to make? Do we need to change the way it's invested? Do we need to re-optimise for tax? Do we need to spend a bit less money or maybe even spend a bit more money? It's estimated there are, there are about 25% of retirees in Australia who are not actually spending enough when it comes to their retirement planning. So run your numbers and don't ignore the longevity risk. The next one is the cost of aged care. Now, aged care in Australia is an incredibly complicated, complex area of financial advice or just area of personal admin in general. There are far too many acronyms, it gets more confusing year on year, and it's very, very pricey. So we need to be thinking ahead around what our future plans will be when it comes to aged care. Are we going to sell our house and move into a home? Are we going to move into our, a retirement village? Are we going to stay with the kids or the grandkids? What does our future look like? And what are we setting aside for that future aged care need? And the final one that again catches so many off guard or by surprise is the financing needed to support the family. This might be grandchildren going to school, it might be your kids buying their first house, it might even be the great grandchildren going to university later in your retirement. If these things are important to you, if you'd like to be able to support the family in this way, plan ahead put it into the budget, make sure we've got that money aside. The last thing we wanna be doing is shooting ourselves in the foot and really depleting our own retirement lifestyle to fund these other goals when we could have simply planned ahead for them and set those reserves aside. So there you have it, some of the common hurdles, the common unexpected surprises, things people don't talk about when it comes to their retirement. Hopefully that gives you a bit of food for thought a few things to think about, or at least have that discussion about around the dinner table. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any comments. Do remember to subscribe to the channel and see you in the next video.